Hi, and welcome to another Tab of the Scar Emporium YouTube video. Um, I had a little idea to do some fiber paper casting kind of baubles. Um, I really like the idea of doing a kind of dark line around the outside, kind of in an opal, and filling the middle with transparent colors. So particularly when you hold them up to the light, they look really nice. Um, I went a bit too dark in the middle, but that's the idea of this vid YouTube video, and we're gonna show you how to make a few of these. So as you can see, I've cut various different kind of shapes that I wanted, um, kind of Christmassy bauble shapes out of fibre paper. Uh, and I've um, just glued them down to some thin fire. Now I need to get the um, metal holders in. So literally all you do is push them into the fibre paper. Uh, that one's gone a bit too far and I'm just gonna grab some tweezers to put it out slightly. And you're just literally having them like that so that they're half in, half out. Uh, the fiber paper and I'm going to do the same with this one here so then all I need to make sure I do is put a piece of glass underneath and a piece of glass over the top and I'm going to do that first now I as I said in my intro I like to do sort of dark glass all the way around these and I also like to sort of do dark glass on the tops of them as well so that would be like the kind of top of the, the Christmas bauble um, so I put a you know one piece on the bottom and sandwich another piece on top and then that's my six mil and that will all sandwich in there and then to do the black line around the edge I use the everyone always asks which glue are you using it's just the blue gel bullseye glue and I'm just sort of going to Last bit of that all the way around the edge and then I'm literally I've cut some strips and they're well, you know between six and eight mil um of black three uh this is this is you know bullseye standard black um three millimeter glass and then I'm just cutting these into short pieces to follow the edge of the mold now at the top, I've got a very small piece there. So I'm going to cut a very small piece to just go in this area here. And I'll probably need tweezers. To... So that goes into place there. And the gel glue just helps hold it all in place. I'm just going to put a bit of gel glue on that. Of course, whenever you're trying to do things on camera, it doesn't want to work. So that in place and I'm going to carry on lining all the way around the mould with these pieces, small pieces of black glass. So as you can see I've lined all the edge of the moulds. I'm doing other things on this kiln shelf so please ignore the other kind of bits of purple you can see that's a commission I'm doing. Um, I'm using space in between to do this project. Um, so here I've done kind of you know alternate red and white pieces over here I've done um, a venturine, light venturine, green and red. And here I've even used some of our um, twisty cane we sell and put that end, cut it into slices and put that end on. Um, so now I'm going to fill them. Now, the, in my tester piece I put all fritten and it was a bit too dark. So this time I am going to put some just um, scrap tector in the bottom first. And then I'll fill on top of that and I might even put more scrap tector on as I go. So I'm going to fill these up um, and then I'll get you to come back to me and see how I'm doing. So now you can see I filled them all up. Um, most of them I've used quite a lot of transparent in and I've even put some more scrap transparent on top. This one I've used some of our um, Christmas bauble marini inside. Um, some of them I've used marini. This one is entirely out of you know what we had in, in vitrograph scrap. Um, this one over here, I've used some of these gold flecks. I got these from Warm Glass a long time ago. Um, if you're going to use something like this, these kind of inclusions, be wary. I've looked at them under um, the polarising filters to look at compatibility after I've done them and they really flare. So put too many of these in your work at your own risk. They may well make it break. So I put some of that on there and I'm now I'm just going to literally... Um, all I've got in here is actually some of those flakes and a couple of bits of yellow glass. So it's really kind of sparse. And I'm going to put some of this um, bullseye's clear on irid frit on top. 
Um, and that's all that's going in that one. It may end up being a bit too light, yeah, but we'll see. Um, so these are now all going to go on and, um, in on the stand of full fuse and we'll have a look at them when they come out. A few of you have asked about cold working. With the cold working of these, all I do is I do it on this grind, the little grinder. Um, and I literally, going over, sometimes I tilt it slightly. This is quite a fine grit grinder, so I'm not trying to take off loads with it. If I had loads to take off, I'd put the thicker grit one on first. And then again, I'm going to work the other side. And then I flip it and work the other side again. Now it's going to go in for a fire polish and I'm probably going to do a quite a high temperature fire polish um, to sort of get out any of these bobbly bits because um, it's not going to really lose its shape at all and um, if it relaxes the shape that's fine. So you know there's pretty much the cold worked edge um, and now it can go in the kiln for a little fire polish. So here they are out of the kiln. Um, I've cleaned them up and as I showed you before I've now ground the edges on my grinder so I've got rid of all the um, uh, excess um, fibre paper. I find it's best to let them dry and as you see there are still some bits here so I'll probably go back on the grinder again now they're dry and I can see where the excess fibre paper still is and give them another going over. Um, I think they're really interesting how these turn out. Um, if you hold them up to the light they're really pretty. It's kind of interesting how I had all of these uh, Marini kind of, sort of spaced evenly apart and how the glass has shifted and moved them. But I don't mind that. It's kind of abstract and nice. I like the colours in this one. Um, so this sort of one I think is really interesting. It can, they can be kind of double sided, which is what I really like about them as well. Is that the, with this particular design, all of them are really nice both ways around. Um, I love these ones, the kind of dual coloured edge bits. I mean, all the shapes go slightly wonky. They're not 100% kind of um, your, your accurate shape, but I quite like that because they're all sort of unique and great. And this would be a great kind of thing to do with kids. Um, this one with the gold flecks, probably best to sort of look at it against it. You can see the kind of gold flecks in here and they look really nice. Um, it's a bit of a funny area here where the gold has stopped the glass melting together. Um, so again, don't put too much gold in. And the irid on top looks really pretty. I don't know whether you can see that on the camera. Um, might put a bit more colour in it, but it's quite interesting as well. Um, I'm going to put these back into tack, um, to fire polish now, and that schedule will be at the bottom. But um, this is the last day I have a filming because I'm going on holiday. So I'm going to finish this up here. Just literally, you're going to fire polish them afterwards and then hang them nicely. I hope you've liked this video and this gives you some ideas of um, making some ornaments for yourself. And if you have, please subscribe.